I don't really buy the Minshew rumors. It's possible, but I feel like the Niners uh, have set themselves up to draft a quarterback in round one, and I think there's probably one in particular that they're, that they're targeting. And I feel like I had an epiphany this morning on who it is. And I say this as someone who kind of predicted the C.J. Beathard thing. Um, in 2017, I had him in I, at least two of probably 17 mock drafts. So I was aware of C.J. Beathard, and I had watched his film, and I realized, look, I mean – his highlights are him under center doing play action, rolling right, rolling left. It's like the three things that the Kyle and Mike Shanahan brain trust need to see. They need to see you turn your back to the defense. They need to see you throw rolling right. They need to see, see you throw rolling left. If you can't do those things, they feel you, they don't fit. You don't fit their offense. So Bether did it. I could see the fit. I thought they'd take him in round six. They took him in round three. Um, I feel like the 49ers or those two in particular reduce quarterback scouting almost to those three things. Obviously there's more, but if you can't do those three things, I think they're turned off because they feel like they can't run their system. So uh, do you think there's something to that? And if so, do you know where I'm going with this? I do. Here's the thing. Trades wise, I can kind of see exactly what Kyle likes in structure on, on time, things like that. That's really what he liked about Kirk Cousins. Remember the RG three thing was Dan Snyder getting in the way and Kyle had to make it work, and they did. Offensive Rookie of the Year, they made it work. I think that Kyle wants a quarterback that can sometimes bail him out so he doesn't have to be 100% perfect. It's It's got to be straining on you to every single play call say, I have to pick the right play because I'm not confident in this A, B, or C. Sometimes you want a quarterback that you call a play, maybe it breaks down, but they make a play for you. And that's really what I think he's looking for. Not necessarily an athletic or mobile quarterback, not True. that at all. True. Just a guy who it doesn't have to be the it doesn't have to be the exact straight perfect play call, but the quarterback can make things happen and and lift up any so anything that happens on the play. And I think sure. that's part of it as well, too. But he does want somebody who can go through his progressions and read everything as well, too. And and I, I like he uses the word computer a lot. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. really what he's really looking for. But who has that mind? Who has that in the draft? So I, I'm I'm interested to hear who you've come around to it. So thinking that it's him. Well, I, I, I keep coming to three traits that I feel like Kyle Shanahan values more than others that he's looking at. It's like, it's not just all those things. It's also, he looks at the ability to turn your back to the defense is almost like a trait. It's something that not all quarterbacks are comfortable with and isn't necessarily coachable. And I feel like the reason I was so confident he wasn't going to take Watson or Mahomes is because they were in the gun all of, in all of uh, college. And Kyle would just say, look, how am I, how can you expect me to spend a first round pick on a quarterback that's going to be doing something in my offense that I haven't seen them do in college? I just haven't seen him do it. That's what he, I could hear him saying it. And maybe that's not the best way to scout quarterbacks, but he's very rigid in his offense. He needs it to fit his offense. So he's going to look for a quarterback that is comfortable and tough because it's, it, it requires a certain amount of toughness and courage to turn your back on the defense and not know where anything is. So he needs to see that and needs to see you rolling right and left. And the guy who who shows it the most of the top five quarterbacks by far is Trey Lance. By far. Spicy. I'm, watching it, I'm, I'm watching it. I'm like, Kyle and Mike's going to love this guy. They're going to love this guy. They're going to say, you know what? He's tough as hell. Look at him run. Look at him turn his back to the D. He's got no problem with any of the play action stuff. Yeah. Uh, and then beyond that, we can coach it up. And I think the way they look at it is, there's a real chance he'll drop to 12 because of the five, the top five, the consensus top five, he's the one that I think everyone feels would benefit the most from sitting. And on the Niners, it's like, cool. Yeah, you can sit. You can sit behind Jimmy uh, for a year. Uh, if Jimmy gets hurt, you can go, go in and play. You're a first-round pick. If not, you can take the, the Patrick Mahomes year. Just develop. And if Jimmy doesn't, like, lead us back to the Super Bowl or – he, he doesn't rebound, then boom, it's your team in 2022. I could really see that happening, Jason. What do you think? I can't tell you how much I love that. So, <laughs> you know, I, I've come on here and I've voiced those similar things. Very pro-style offense that NDSU runs. Oh, all of those same Kyle yeah. concepts, RPO, flood bootlegs, yes. all those sort of things. That's that's why I feel, you know, it, it was it's weird to me when people tell me, hey, it's going to be a huge scheme change for Trey Lance. No, 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 not no. at all. No, the only thing that will change is the verbiage. Everything else – as far as the concepts and what's run, you know, when you run the, the, the bootleg and you run it uh, with flood, there's a throw at each level. You get to pick one, two, three, either deep. And, and it's a staple of McVay, all those guys, you know, the same the same sort of offense. 
you, you're preaching to the choir here. Don't get me excited and don't don't. I'm not saying that it's necessarily going to work out or which what I would do or it's the best move. I'm just trying to think like Kyle and Mike, and I did it in 2017. Somehow I channeled their thoughts and found C.J. Beathard, and I could see their their thought process. I got to see these three things. How can you ask? How can you expect me to say he fits my offense if I can't see these three things? You can see it with with Trey Lance. You can see it all the time. Rolling right, rolling left, turning his back. He's super duper tough. One more thing about Trey Lance, too, as well. Uh, man, when you're talking about run-heavy team, play action, throws to open guys. It was uh, in one of my mock drafts. I think that counts. So <laughs> rolling right, all those things, run, yeah. rushing ability, running offense, play uh, play action, all those things. That sounds like somebody we know, right? Like right now. Not, not that he can run like that, but – Throw, you know, I hear complaints. All right, he's throwing a wide open guys. Oh, they run the ball all the time. Sounds like somebody we know. And, and you know, that plays for the, you know, he who shall not be named gets guys oh, yeah. wide open all the time and all those right. things. That's so right. you, you can't in one breath tell me, you can't in one breath tell me one thing about somebody and then use it as a as a negative for somebody else. That's that's yeah. What yeah. I just feel it, it's a good fit. The guy needs to sit a year. He can sit on the Niners. And if he falls to 12, I think, I think they'll take him. I'm not sure he will fall to 12. And I'm not sure the Niners, the Niners will trade up for him. I don't know if they want to make that kind of a move with Jimmy still on the team. But if he falls to 12, that's my prediction. I think they even would have him over Mac Jones. I watch Mac Jones. He's in the, he's in the pistol a lot. It's not quite the same. Um, look at the quarterbacks on the Niners right now. Josh Rosen, he was under center in college. Josh Johnson, he was under center in college. He played for Jim Harbaugh. I don't think Kyle's really changed that much. He really values the ability to line up under center and do those, you know, deep drop backs where you just turn your back. So something to, something to keep in mind. Kyle Trask, I don't think he ever did it. So you can just pretty much write him off. Never going to happen. Now, other people did. We'll talk about that in a second. But uh, I, I just bled into who I my next topic, who I think they're going to target in round one. Trey Lance. Anyway, you with it? You think that, that could happen? I mean, it seems like a pretty good fit. I don't know if it's going to work out. He needs some, some coaching. Kyle would need to do some good work with him, but. I'm scared of two teams. I'm scared of two teams ahead of the 49ers that may jump on him. One is Atlanta. They're literally running another variation of the Shanahan system with Arthur Smith. So all those same things are there. And he can definitely sit behind Matt Ryan because Matt Ryan is going to play the whole year. Uh Carolina scares me too as well. Because Carolina is going to go for a quarterback. I just don't yeah. know if Matt Rule is going to value Matt Jones or Trey Lance. I just don't think Trey – I don't think Trey's sticking around at 12. I really don't. I really don't. There's going to be five quarterbacks taken in the top 12, I think. Let me. I know. I agree. You're You're probably right. Let me – Let me. let's Let's try to play this out. So sure. number one pick is Trevor Lawrence. Number two pick, I'm not sure who – to who, but it's going to be Zach Wilson. I think it's Wilson, yes. But I don't know if it's going to be the Jets or someone else. Now, the Falcons, they just – renegotiated so they just, they're, they're moving money around they had to okay. get under the cap and things like that so who knows it's just his dead cap hit went up after they did the restructure remember when we were going through the, the hypotheticals and i think his was something like 40 million now it's 43 million or yeah. something like that so it makes it even harder here's the thing though man ryan's what 35 yeah He's probably got a good solid four more years left in him so there may be True. a team that if the if the cap goes up will Look at him and say, you know what? Bring him on. Let's let's do a team that's close, right? A team that needs mm -hmm. that that needs a quarterback, veteran presence, a guy who's been in big games. So, in terms of looking down the line with with cap hits and things like that, it's tough to do that right now because we've just gotten the numbers on, you know, what the salary cap is going to look like now, what it may look like down the line, and it may explode if we get butts and seats this this year. The cap's going to go up and things will change. So Atlanta's the one that scares me though because they they fit with the Shanahan system. It, it's the one that scares me the most. That makes honestly. sense. That makes yeah. sense. So he could go four. He could go four, definitely. Um, they also could take Mac Jones. They could. They could. And, and see, someone made a, com a comparison of Mac to Matt Ryan. And it kind of makes sense a little bit. Mm -hmm. I know that the popular comparison is Kirk Cousins. But Matt Ryan actually makes sense in the way that he throws the ball with anticipation a little bit. And, you know, Matt Ryan can throw it down the field. And, and I saw Mac do that. You know, forget his pro day. We're talking about on – on uh, on film, so it, Atlanta's the no, one that scares me. Way. Atlanta's the one that scares it's me. It's possible. Honestly, it's possible. So you you think they go quarterback at four? I think so. Okay, so they could the go. The reason Trey is Lance. this. The reason is is this. 
roster construction and how you want to build teams is one thing. But when you see as many quarterbacks in one draft, you have to change your thought process because who knows if next year that's what it's going to be. You can't swing and miss on one of these guys now or not not try for him. And then next year it's just what Desmond Ritter and like Spencer Rattler and like, yeah. you know, not that they're bad. I'm just saying that what if it's just those two? It's what true. if it's just maybe three? Now there's like potentially four or five and there's some sleepers in there that people are trying to bring up. Maybe six, seven guys who are going to be successful in this league. I just don't know who those other are. From the five, I'm good with the five. I know those guys are going to be solid in, in, in the league, you know, with that high ceiling for, for most of those guys. The other ones, those are the ones that scare me a little bit. And who those guys are, you know, the Davis Mills hype is, is taking off a little bit. You got to kind of take credit for that a little. You know, the, 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 yeah, I'm, no? I, yeah, sure, I'll take it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I so da- yeah. Davis Mills is one of the one of the interesting ones at the end of the draft, but you know, you you started. We're going to talk about round well. two in a second. We're going to talk about that in a second. Sure. Like, hey, what happens if the Niners miss out on Lance or whoever they're targeting? I let me let's just play it out though. Let's say let's say that Falcons take Mac Jones because I think that's a possibility. Uh, his stock is pretty high. Then the next spot, someone would expect. Would you expect the Lions at seven, or or would you expect Carolina at eight to be the next spot? I think most people would expect Carolina at eight, right? I think so too. I mean, he, again, Matt Rule all he's been doing is talking about quarterbacks, man. I think they would take Justin Fields because uh, Brady is a spread offense guy, and Justin Fields played in a spread offense in college. I think that it would be an easier transition for Justin Fields. He'd be doing a lot of the stuff he did in college. I think they would take him. Yeah, I mean, Justin Fields isn't going to be Fields. there at twelve either. So that's what I'm saying. So I mean, yeah. Just- so that's how Lance could go is if Matt goes to goes four to Atlanta and Fields goes eight to Carolina. It's possible. Uh, if it doesn't work out that way, let's I don't think the Niners would take a quarterback in round one. Uh, I, I just don't feel if like they, they stick at 12. If they stick at 12 and, the and five Lance are off. is in there and the, and the five are off the five are off. I don't I think they would take you. a quarterback. So let's say them trading back. They could trade back. Real quick, if the Niners keep Jimmy Lance sit for 10, 17, yeah, exactly. That's the whole point is that he could sit for a little bit. And then that's why it would be a good fit. But he may not be there. 